With a new set on the horizon, it is time to ask ourselves again, which units can beat the early PvE stages by themselves? In case you're unfamiliar with the strategy, ever since Riot normalized gold drops, you can consistently reach 10 gold in stage 1-4 if you only field a single tier 1 unit. This allows you to reach the first threshold for gold interest and accelerate your economy right away. It is also possible to reach 10 gold in stage 1-3, usually with the help of specific portals or encounters that grant you bonus units at the very beginning. Especially players who enjoy loss streaking love this mechanic because they don't care about the units they field anyways and would much rather build up a strong economy. Now sometimes you will encounter players who will tell you that you can't generate interest in the early PvE stages but this is not true. You were always able to gain bonus gold if you reach the threshold for it. I already proved this many times but there's actually one very specific interaction that I haven't shown yet. Do you get the interest in stage 1 2, the first stage of the game. There is a new Yorick encounter that makes every player start with a 7 team size while also granting 10 gold. In a normal game, when you reach stage 1-3, you should only have 2 gold in your bank if you didn't pick up any loot orbs before. Since we receive 10 gold from Yorick right away, we can check if the interest works at the start of the game. As you can see here, I have 13 gold with 10 coming from Yorick, 2 from the starting gold and 1 from the interest. Thanks to Yorick, this myth can finally be put to rest. If you're a more seasoned player, then you probably just want to know which units you can use to defeat the early stages and and you don't really care about the rest. If you want a short version, I put a written guide in the description of this video, but I would still recommend sticking around because there are a lot of interesting details that can become relevant in future patches. Let's start with stage 1-3. For this, I will separate all of the tier 1 units into two categories, unsafe and safe. For the most part, melee units will be placed in either A2 or A6, depending on their spell, and ranged units will be placed in D7. At the bottom of the unsafe category, we currently have Caitlyn and Ari. Both of them seem awful, and without an item, it doesn't even look like they have a chance of beating the PvE round. Quite frankly, making these two work is probably just as hard as convincing viewers to subscribe to my channel. Units that show a bit more promise are Garen, Kobuku, Yasu, Siva and Rek'Sai. All of these units can defeat stage 1-3 by themselves, but they can also fail. Their success is quite dependent on minion damage and at the moment I would only recommend these units if you have a useful item component. At the top of this list is Kha'Zix. Compared to the other units, he managed to stay above 50 HP every fight so far, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility of an unfortunate fight since the data sample is currently rather small. Units that felt safe for stage 1-3 are Jax, Derek, Darius, Cho'Gath, Malphite and Kog'Ma. Outside of Jax, all of these units should survive the stage with over 200 HP and as long as you make sure you position them in the A2 Hex, which is the second Hex in the first row, you shouldn't have to worry about any of these units. While Jax did drop quite low in some fights, he should be able to survive any incoming damage because of his high armor buff and the damage from a second cast should always get rid of the last caster minion. Next up, let's talk about stage 1-4, but this will be a bit complicated complicated. Darius appears to be the only unit that is capable of beating all 4 minions without requiring an item. But unfortunately he is not 100% reliable. While your units can crit to potentially win the fight faster, it is also possible for minions to crit which results in more damage taken. Darius usually drops very low when he walks towards the last caster minion and he needs to finish the fight with a second spin. You will encounter fights where he doesn't have enough HP left and dies before reaching full mana. This means placing Darius in stage 1-4 without any items is currently not recommended. However, this all changes if you give him components like giant spelt, chain vest or even a tier. Now he should be very reliable in defeating stage 1-4 and you can use him to reach the 10 gold threshold for your bonus interest. In theory, you can also give him a bow or a BF and this should increase your overall chances but I wouldn't go as far as saying that these components guarantee success. For example, I have a few fights where Darius with no items ended up surviving stage 1-4 with over 50 HP, but there are also plenty of examples where he was 
only missing a tiny amount of mana for his second cast and ended up losing the fight. In this fight with a BF, he does succeed, but he only has 29 HP left, which is less than other fights where he didn't even have an item. With a giant spell, you should always be safe. And for example, in this fight with a tier, he did survive the fight with 165 HP. I would not be surprised if there is a specific positioning that might help Darius to become more reliable. So if you want to research this topic yourself, this is probably the best starting point. Now we get to the most interesting part of this video, because there is one more unit that can in fact beat stage 1-4 with the help of items. If you place a Malphite in A2 or A6 with a giant spell or a tier, it is possible for him to defeat all minions as well. This is because during his ability, he gets a lot of armor and can take down the first caster minion with his enhanced attack that is dealing magic damage in a cone behind his target. There's only one problem, this is not reliable and the reason for it is incredibly stupid. Malphite is not allowed to crit in the first two attacks. If he deals too much damage with normal attacks to his target, then he only needs one enhanced attack to finish it, but the caster in the backline needs to get hit twice. Malphite now swaps his target to the other melee minion and then he ends up taking too much damage. And if this problem wasn't annoying enough, if you try to circumvent this by giving him a tier, then the fight is so close that the amount of damage you take from minions will make the difference if Malphite wins the fight or not. I also tried components like Chain Vest, but it looks like they make this problem even worse because he would end up having to attack more often before he even activates his ability, so Chain Vest did not feel like a viable option in the end. Outside of Malphite, there are two more units I want to showcase because they have extremely high potential and might become viable options in the future if they end up receiving buffs. First we have Cho'Gav with a giant spelt. So far I did not manage to beat stage 1-4 in the setup, but some fights felt incredibly close and it didn't feel like Cho'Gav was missing much to defeat the last caster minion as well. Second we have Kogma who exceeded all of my expectations when I was testing. Not only was he one of the best performing units in stage 1-3, he came extremely close to beating 1-4 as well. This is because in his first cast he will one-shot one of the caster minions since they have less HP than the melee units in front of him. Unfortunately, by the time he is full mana again, the melee minion he is attacking loses too much HP and his second cast is wasted. I tried some setup with giant spelt Kogma or give him a tier after his first cast, but at the moment it doesn't look like he has enough power to carry the stage by himself. If there is a setup where he would target the second caster minion with his second ult or just deal less damage to his initial target, then he might honestly become a viable option. There is a pretty good chance that this current list of units will change in the future and I'll try to keep the written guide in the description up to date if anything changes throughout the set. Something I haven't touched upon yet is that there are encounters and portals that can help you to defeat the early PvE stages. For example, Tristana grants every player 4 gold, which means you should be able to buy a second unit and still reach the threshold. Or maybe you have the Wandering Vendor or Wandering Trainer portal that gives every player a target dummy with several items. Items. These dummies are so strong that there shouldn't be a problem anymore with beating the early PvE stages. Did you find any setup that I haven't covered in this video that you can use to beat either stage 1-3 or 1-4? Let me know in the comments. I hope you learned something and see you next time. So if, if, if I do this, if I do this, I have like a 50-50 chance of making 1-4. <laughs> Okay, okay, fuck it. I, I'm gonna risk it, okay? I, I wanna show this. So if he crits this melee, I lose. If he doesn't crit the melee, I win. It is that stupid. Okay, that's good, that's good. I think he got it, right? Hold, hold, hold. Wait. Yeah, he got it. Oh, that was... <laughs> I think he should be able to win from this. Unless... Calculated! <laughs>